Hello guys, how are you? Thank you again for tuning in to Amanda Show. Uh, I don't take it for granted. Thank you for my supporters, my family, especially my husband. You've been really a good help. And to my children and my house manager, Jackie, I salute you. Thank you also for um, uh, St. Please at Lens Africa for your support in this. Uh, you have really, really helped me. To Nakola and uh, Zamark Mzik. Eh? Did I say it well? Yeah. Thank you guys for always making sure that I get good quality of whatever I post. So God bless you. And for everyone who wants to support us, please, uh, there is a number on the screen, 0740-592999. Yeah, you can support us in this ministry if you want to support us uh, through, um, you can just call me and uh, tell me how you want to support this ministry. And as well, for those who are outside there and willing to share their testimonies on this platform, please don't hesitate to do it kindly, kindly. Yeah, just contact me on the, on the Facebook or, or Instagram or the phone number that is on the screen. And so today we are going to have a very, very breathtaking <laughs> testimony. Yeah, by one beautiful lady, Susie, who is going to share her testimony. And um, I believe it's going to be a good testimony uh, that you're going to be encouraged and learn more on this journey of waiting, heal the pain and the healing. Yes. So have me welcome, Susie. So how are you, Susan? I'm good. Yes. yes. Thank you. Sana and Amanda Show. Thank you. Thank you for accepting to take part in this. Yes. We don't take it for granted. Mm. Yeah. So we are going to dive in into your story. Okay. And... Uh, Yes, I want you to introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's, who is Susie? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Mm. Thank you so much for inviting me here mm. and finding it that I am okay to sit on this seat and discuss on today's topic. Yes. So I thank you for the platform. Mm -hmm. I also thank God that he has made it possible for us to be doing this. Yeah. And he has... Uh, created this opportunity mm -hmm. and even the platform. Yes. As you've started by calling me, I'm Susan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm Susan Mushiri Joke. I don't know whether I should be starting with Joke Mushiri or Mushiri Joke. Joke is, is my dad's name. Uh -huh. Mushiri is my husband. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, 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 I think, seven years, uh, seven months into marriage. So I'm yet to settle on the name to know which one comes first. Maybe you'll help me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Joke comes first, then Mushiri. Okay, so I'm yes. Susan Joke Mushiri. Yes. And I'm born again. Amen. I thank God. Uh, he has been my savior and he has walked me through a journey, including what we are talking about today. Yes, yes. So I'm grateful to God. Mm -hmm. I'm an administrator mm -hmm. um, and also uh, an online influencer and more of what we are doing today. Yes. Yeah, so, of course, um, my wife, a daughter, mm -hmm. and a friend to such great people like you. Yes. Yes. Glad to hear from you. How has your journey of marriage been, uh, of waiting, of, um, yeah, your journey of waiting, how has it been? Oh, wow. Uh, not easy mm -hmm. for the biggest part that I've experienced, the waiting part, but to a season where I made peace with it, mm -hmm. it has been easy, it has been okay, it has been fine, and it has been peaceful. Okay. Uh, getting to know that you have issues with uh, fertility, that mm -hmm. you have a challenge to conceive naturally, mm -hmm. is one of the most painful things a woman would want to know and to learn about. Eh? Yeah. And so, of course, when I got to know it, it was not easy for me. 
uh, I, I think even before I got to know, I already had a phobia of not to ever get a child. I had experienced it before with family members, mm-hmm. and I had already kind of traumatized by someone else's experience. Mm-hmm. So this is something I was already like, hey, when I want to get married, I don't want even to stay. I want to just get a child so that I don't risk anything. Mm. So now coming to realize that I have a problem on it, it was not easy. Mm. And it was it didn't look like a reality to me. I was like, it's not happening to me. And you see now when you're growing up and you're seeing some people fight that and Sometimes people want to think you're too young to understand what is happening. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. So you are in a position where you're observing things that are happening. You cannot question much, but those things are really getting into you mm. because you're wondering, hey, okay. Then now, here you are. It's you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think the first confusion is who to tell mm. and uh, who not to tell. Mm. And now the fear of, will you ever come out of it? Mm-hmm. Because definitely you hear their treatment and all that. So you're wondering, but you also hear, you know, there are people who are yet to be there many years. Yeah. So you're yeah. like, so for me, what will happen? Mm. So, but the Lord was faithful because even in that kind of confusion and when you're still lost, mm-hmm. I would say I didn't lose my mind. I didn't lose myself mm-hmm. in it. Eh? Mm-hmm. That's why I'm able to talk about it today. Yes, yes. Because when you lose yourself in a situation, it becomes very, very hard to come out of it. Mm-hmm. So I would say God was with me. And he has been with me all through. Mm-hmm. There were so many ups and downs trying. And there was that time we were like, I will try until I get. And this I must <laughs> get. <laughs> yeah. So there was that time I must get. Mm. Then there is a time there, it's like I'm not getting. Yeah. It's like it's not happening. Mm. Then there is a time of, now I'm not even praying about it. Um, um, I'm done, even with this God, even with this marriage, even with this. Like life now stops mm. making meaning. Now mm. that energy you had of I must try yeah. at some point disappears. Mm. And now you start feeling frustrated and even hating yourself and hating life as mm. a whole. Mm. And then now finally, that's why I'm saying I didn't lose myself because that is the point at which many people get lost. Mm. But thank God. I came out of that stage, and when I came out of it, mm-hmm. it has been good. Wow. It has been good. Wow. It's like when a woman is labeling and the pain is mm. intense, and finally, psh, the child Get is the out. Child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you forget about everything. You forget about everything. <laughs> yeah. That's how I think the Lord pushed me out of that problem. Mm -hmm. He didn't give me a child, so it's not like I was able to conceive and all that. eh? Mm -hmm. But he gave me healing and he gave me peace. So I came out of it. Mm -hmm. So today, I'm happy. I bless God. Mm -hmm. And I smile about it. Amen. Maybe if you can just um, take us back Mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, You said you you are married for seven months now yes you're in yes. marriage for seven months yes but you have been waiting for mm-hmm. how many <laughs> <laughs> for how long wow my journey of waiting mm-hmm. i would say i got to know about it in the um i would say 2014 mm-hmm. uh, because i got married in 2012 okay where i am today i'm saying i'm seven months into marriage because this is a second chance that god has given me mm-hmm. in marriage okay. and i thank god because this second uh, time it came as it came as a package full of it like mm. watoto, so i don't have to look for children wow <laughs> from your husband <laughs> from my husband awesome. side, eh? so he, he, this one was a full package that mm. was delivered to me eh? mm. and um so for 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 i got married in 2012 mm. then 2013 i'm not so much into looking for a kid i'm mm. just saying honeymoon face mm-hmm. so 2014 towards 20 end of 2013 is when i thought oh, now this is a time for yeah. me maybe to start trying so 2014 is when i would literally say it's when i got to know so it's a journey of almost now 10 years, 10 years yes yes. Mm. yes and um but then I wouldn't say that the whole time I've been trying mm. uh, because 
um, the first marriage came to an end. There was so much that happened in between. Mm. And um, towards the end of 2016, when we were starting 2017, we felt the best thing is when we live separate, when we go separate ways. Mm. So then I wouldn't say I've been trying for the last 20, 10 years because from 2017 mm. I was single mm. until I was there that day God decided to give me now a full package. Yeah. Do, have you ever had, uh, uh, is it hearing or reading the word of God where it says the former and the latter mm. all together? delivered yes that's what the lord did okay yes and for the for the former <laughs> for the former marriage mm -hmm. um the separation was it also uh the, the part that you are you had the infertility issues was it part of it of your separation i would say yes i would say it's uh, it's the largest contributor to it uh, you mm. know Infertility is too heavy for someone to carry mm. for both partners, yes. the man and the woman. And unless God really intervenes, eh, mm. it makes everything else not to work. Uh. Because now you already have a struggle that you, you, you are carrying on yourself. Eh? Uh. So you really don't have the capacity to handle other small, small bits. And yeah. anything small can trigger anything. Yes. And uh, so for me, that I would say it was the major thing. It was not the only thing, mm. but I would feel like if it wasn't, um, well, I wouldn't say maybe it would have worked if it was not. In the, <laughs> because there are people who are anyway divorcing when yeah. they have children. Yeah, yeah. Huh? But I feel if it was not a factor, mm. there are so many other things that could not have happened. Okay. Because this one was a real trigger to everything falling apart. Mm. Mm. And what, what was the issue of your infertility? Okay, my issue is that both of my fallopian tubes are blocked. Because mm -hmm. uh, when I got married, before I got married, I was, uh, there was a time I was unwell. Mm. Um, actually, the year that I was supposed to get married, I got sick. Mm. And I got admitted to hospital. And uh, there was an operation that was done on me. Mm. And it kind of, when it was healing, it kind of interfered with my reproductive system, one of my fallopian tubes. It was kind of halfway blocked. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know then, because then I was still not married and all mm. that. And you know, it had nothing to do with the, 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 the reproductive system. So it's not like I was aware of anything. Mm. So... Now, when I started trying is when now I went and they realized that one is halfway blocked. Mm -hmm. Only them know what that means, mm -hmm. but the other one was okay. Mm -hmm. So really, if, uh, you know, for a woman's cycle every month, the ovulation can go through one side this month, the yes. other side, the other mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. So it would have been expected that because it's one that is blocked, I would maybe misconceive one month, but the other one, mm. I should be able to conceive. Mm. Unfortunately, for me, it didn't happen. So I went um, through some tests, which are very painful. Mm. Uh, and they were just trying to see if they, of course, it's the test that was able to identify that um, one of it is partially okay. blocked. Not, yeah. mm. Um, um, so then uh, they recommended that they, they thought through the test, there's a test they call HSG mm -hmm. where a dye is inserted through your, mm -hmm. uh, the tubes uh, and by chance it, they, the dye itself can open any blockage mm -hmm. if it's not anything major. Mm -hmm. So the, the testing part of it can also help you to unblock the tubes. Uh. Mm -hmm. So I was told after the test, I was told to give it time because maybe the one that was halfway blocked can mm -hmm. help um, uh, the dye could have helped to unblock and maybe I can't conceive. So I waited, I think, for three months that I didn't conceive. Mm. So then the other option was trying to unblock the tubes. Through surgery. Through surgery, yes. Mm. And um, <laughs> the funny bit of this, this time, mm -hmm. now you're not okay emotionally. Mm. And you're just wishing, you just fired someone with a solution to this. Yes. And you just want every hope that can be found. But then the doctor tells me, we can do this surgery to try and unblock, mm -hmm. but it's 50-51. And then if you don't conceive, your tubes now will block completely. 
Really? Yes, because they say as it heals, as the uh, the surgery heals, yeah? mm. there are those adhesions that they come. You see, when you get a kidoda and mm. Mm. there is that. So they said, no, the healing part will mm. cause it now to, if you don't conceive within six months, mm-hmm. now it will block completely. Wow. So you're going into this and knowing after six months, now you will either confirm that you can be a mom or, or not. it's done. Gosh. <laughs> so you're thinking you're looking for a solution, but this solution is also adding to your like to your fears. Mm. And now you're so anxious. Mm. And you're like, God, this is the only chance now I have. Mm. It's better the time you're being told it's partially blocked, the other one is open. But this time they are telling you once we operate on them. They all be blocked in yes. here, not here. And now this uh this so uh, the, the the procedure, mm. the um, and the, the success rate is 50-50. I wish they were talking of 80, 80 20, 90, 10. 50-50 is low. So 50-50. And you're like, okay. But then they're telling you, even the women who conceive naturally, conception, we say it's 50-50. You can either conceive or not. So this is a life. Okay. I chose to go for it mm-hmm. because I really wanted to try my best mm. and uh, see what could have happened. So I went through it. And uh, finally, six months came, I had not conceived. So I didn't have to go and ask, <laughs> what, is the, <laughs> what is the way forward? <laughs> what is the way forward? Wow. Now you can imagine the six months of trying. trying and and now knowing that now you have, you have received the treatment, now mm. kuna hopes, there are some hope in this. Mm. Hi. So you're not even waiting to heal your wounds of surgery well. You're like, I mean business. Mm. So this time is where I think um, there are some um, uh, beliefs. Yeah? There are mm. some, I don't know, I don't want to call them religions, cultures. There are some mm-hmm. cultures yeah, that argue that uh, sex is a holy uh, act mm. and it should only be exercised for reproduction and not for pleasure. Mm. And I think this is a time now you want to unite with them and hold the hearts and yes. say, this time we are not doing anything for pleasure. So you are trying to check everything that can help a woman conceive. Anything else, watch an anayo. Mm. Whether comfortable for you or uncomfortable, we are here for reproduction. Mm. So we mean business. So it was six months of business. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Intensive business. Intensive business. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine that's what I'm saying the whole thing the infertility affects the whole marriage yeah, the way you conduct everything who uh, sometimes there's so many theories oh my god trying to conceive when, <laughs> when you have a charity it's such a charity because there's so many theories oh well that time you're trying don't do heavy jobs you don't Eat don't this. don't eat these. <laughs> After making love, you must lie. See you on which position, you know, uh, all those things. So now you can imagine instead of living normal life, people yeah. who are living like I don't know. You, it's like you're helping God to literally create. Mm. It's like you know mm. the way you were told come up with this. Yes. So that's what we tried. In six months, it didn't work. Mm. So now we knew all is and so we went ahead now to look for more uh, help mm. and now finally the only option well I had I had like three beautiful options at that point mm-hmm. because there was one beautiful way of getting children through adoption yeah which is complete mm. there is an option of um waiting on God. Pray, mm. believe, and have faith mm. because God works miracles. Yes. Mm. I've had people saying they were told their uterus cannot hold even a single child, and then they mm. have had triplets with the same uterus mm. from that womb, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So God can work <laughs> miracles. So yes. that was also a, <laughs> a solution. Yeah. Then now I also had the solution of going for H- um, IVF. IVF. Uh-huh. So. Um, um, I decided, and now, uh, since I didn't have, according to the doctor's test, I didn't have any other problem. Okay. Everything else was, was okay. Good. Yes, so even when I, I, so we decided to go for IVF. Mm-hmm. Um, 
something that I'm trying to pray God and think what could be done mm. so that it can be a bit easier and a bit okay. There are people who say we, we okay. There is a doctor who told me we don't say it's costly, like it's expensive, mm. because uh, he was telling me if you look at the much people use trying to get help from mm. everywhere after you get to know yeah. they use a lot other than if you decide that now we cannot conceive naturally so let's say for the next two years so okay. that the that year we go for IVF so mm. he was trying to show me the logic of that eh? mm. but definitely it requires so much discipline in terms of saving and also it depends with your earnings yes so I would still feel like it's costly mm -hmm. for the for the for the for the common woman out there yeah it who is, is seeking to it get is. it is right yeah. and then i also wonder sometimes you want to even to take a loan for this and then let's pray god that it happens you succeed mm. now there is a child a child needs to be brought up yeah you don't want to get a child when you're just negatives in your account yeah. because how will you even buy pampers how will yeah. you even feed this child you know frustration frustration yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh we we still went through it thank god we were mm. able to do it um and the experience i had the doctors were telling me ah you're so young that time i think i was in my early middle 20s because i got married early 20s eh? mm. so in my middle 20s the doctors are telling me ah, you have your chances are very high. Uh, You're very young. Um, your ovaries are very healthy. Your womb is in perfect position. I remember one doctor telling me that I own is a baby a triplet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very hopeful because the only thing that I'm not able to do is that my tubes cannot allow fertilization to take place. Mm. But should fertilization be assisted, then I'm okay. okay. Yeah. So I that was the it was it looked like this is the solution now. Mm. This is the way to go. Mm. So we went for it. Unfortunately, it didn't work the first time. Mm -hmm. It was bad, 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 bad. Uh, then it was we were told uh, we can try the second time. The second time is not as expensive if you didn't use all the embryos eh, oh. that were remained. Okay. So for us, we were lucky enough we had not used everything. Mm. So we went for the second time. Unfortunately, again, it failed. So that crashed our hopes. Mm -hmm. It was uh, The second time was even worse because the first time, I think... I think it's me who received the news with, it's me who it affected most. Mm. But the second one, no, both of us were like, there's no one to console there. <laughs> we are yeah. all crying there. We all feel it. Hopeless. Mm. Yeah, feel it. I don't know. It was a bad experience. And I think it's at that point we were like, it's like we accept. Mm. Because there is also another beautiful way yeah. of doing life mm. in the whole Thing, yes, that you can be complete in your marriage and happy with or without children. children true. So that was also an amazing option that was left for mm, us. Mm. That we could just decide and go and say we're going to do life, we are going to be happy, we are going to enjoy. And at some point we even said, maybe we were not created for for, for this. We must have been created for a different purpose. Mm. We need to look which is this purpose we yeah, have in life. Yeah. And I think today is the time I'm living that purpose. Yeah. Oh, because I believe that um, I was created to give hope to a woman going through infertility. Mm. And sometimes I used to ask God, because sometimes people would tell you, don't worry, God knows, maybe God has a purpose. And then you're wondering, what purpose does God have? Mm. Why can't, why me? Why can't he Like me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Reveal that purpose to me, God. Um, and again, mm. okay, if it's the purpose of uh, encouraging women, instead of God giving me the burden, now and dear God, mm. see our heel. Yeah. What is this whole thing of, you know, mm. there was that face that I was wondering. I wouldn't even listen to such a thing mm. that maybe you will come to give someone hope. Let God give them hope. That's what I would feel then. Mm. That's not me. 
God don't choose me. Don't make someone blind that he can tell other blind people that they can't see. They can't. <laughs> You know, <laughs> they can see. Imagine. <laughs> so I fought with that. Huh? Yeah. But today I, I understand that there are things it's not for us to understand. Mm. There are things that make God who he is. Yeah. Otherwise, if we knew him, then he ceases to be God. So still today, mm. uh, if you asked me, why would he decide to deny you a child so that you can tell other people they can be happy with or without children? Mm. I don't know. But in it, he has healed me and he has made me now live the purpose. Wow. And that's the reason you didn't uh, call me twice about this. Mm. You only said it once. once and, and I said, accepted. if it's about this, <laughs> I I'm will. okay. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I was like, where are those women? I come and talk to them. Mm, <laughs> you know. I know. Yes, because it's it's not easy. It's yeah. not easy. Mm-hmm. And uh, people experience other difficult difficult things mm. out of infertility. Mm. Because sometimes like I was interacting with someone and they were telling me they have taken so much of humble um treatment mm. until now they have issues with their lung. Wow. You can imagine. And she was telling me, she went to the doctor when now she developed some problems. The doctor was asking her, uh, was telling her, you're taking too much alcohol. And she cried, I've never tasted alcohol in my life. Mm. And the doctor was like, what is this that you are taking that looks like it's too conk? Mm. It's eating up your lungs. And so after giving her story, mm. it's like, those are the things. Stop these they humble happen. things. You know, there are those people who are suffering depression. Marriages have ended. People have committed suicide. And this infertility thing comes with so many other bad things in it. Yeah. So that's why it's, um, I feel if we are able to come and say, yes, I've gone through it. Mm. I am here. I'm happy. Mm. Don't kill yourself. Stop those things. There is the right way to do it mm. because it's also good to try. It's good to try up to. Because for me, I, I say I tried all the scientific ways. I tried all the spiritual ways because mm. I prayed. I fasted. Mm. I was told start giving thanks because God blesses a heart that is full of gratitude. <laughs> I started thanking him. <laughs> Thank you for the child that is coming. <laughs> Thank him for the child that is coming. I started thanking. Uh, I was told you give seed. I give seeds. Not one. I give seeds. Mm. Wow. I was told everything and I did everything. I was, we were told you cannot get a child with this kind of a marriage when you're fighting day and night. You need to be at peace because we used to have differences every now and then. Mm. So I would try to be a good wife so that I increase my chances because I'm told stress will not help mm. you in this situation. You need yeah. to be very sober. Mm. Try peace. So I think I tried everything that is within human means. Mm. There's nothing I've not done. Even hating God and thinking there could be other solutions. Mm. Thank God I never went to any witch. eh? Mm. (laughs) 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 But at some point I felt like even being too much close to God Mm. could be the thing. So I tried everything. And uh, so today I live with the peace of knowing that uh, I've tried, but then it didn't work. Mm. So... I still live. So to any woman, I I, I want to tell them it's good to try, but know what is safe for you and the right time to let it go and to accept it. Mm. And who knows? God in his miraculous ways. You might conceive. You might conceive. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) God is not a man. He doesn't use our our ways. Yes. But then even on that, I normally say, I, I, I... for me, I will not tell a woman when I find a woman who is praying God and trusting God for a child. I am a believer in God, mm. but I won't tell someone that uh, so and so waited for 10 years. You have just waited for two years, continue waiting. You don't know the Lord may come mm. because the way of God coming, it's not just giving you children. Yes. He may never come along that path. Mm. So if I tell you that, there are people who have waited for 10 years who so continue waiting. After 10 years, what will I tell you? Uh-huh. 
after 20 years what will i tell mm. you because they will go yeah time will go mm. and those years will come <laughs> when we are saying they will come so you said you said <laughs> <laughs> Ten years, mm-hmm. and God needs to be God. Yeah. So the thing is, we are not waiting for that time when God will bring a child, will make me uh, conceive naturally. For me to know now, God has come. God mm. is with us mm. every moment of our time, and whether He gives or He doesn't, mm. we have a reason to live and to thank God. Yeah, sure, I remember sure. buying baby clothes. Actually, I still have baby clothes. I don't know whether my husband knows this. <laughs> <laughs> it was even it's juicy when discover. I got him. <laughs> it's going to discover today. <laughs> it's going to discover today because then, yeah. long time now when I was in the other marriage, I bought some baby clothes so that I lift my faith to mm. God and tell him. Because I, I remember one preacher who told us that you're trusting God for, for a car and you even don't know how to drive. <laughs> Go and do driving <laughs> classes. Get a driving license. Get a driving license. <laughs> show God your face. You can go in the show show house. Yes. And then start house. selecting yes. the car you want. Yes. Don't start looking cars that are old out here. Go to the show house. Point the one that you want. Tell God it is this, this that is I want. The one. <laughs> yeah. He will tell him. But until he decides. <laughs> I'm not giving you a car. <laughs> then you hear someone testifying in church mm. that how God blessed them with a car. Now even they don't know how to drive, so they had to ask. I don't know who to take the your car home, and you are like, me, I have, <laughs> I have the license. I have the license, but I don't have the car. <laughs> yeah, because that time I had bought clothes and uh, as a, as a way of expressing my faith to God. Mm. And then there are people out there who have children. They don't even have clothes to clothe them. So I'm like, I can see is in What are you doing with this? Here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is someone who got a child and they dump them on the dump yeah. site. Here you are with your clothes waiting on God. Mm. So God is God mm. in his own way. And we cannot fix him yeah. to a corner and tell him, the blessing I want, God, is a child. Yo. Live alone is if it is in and pay. For now, it's, it's, a child. it's a child. I'll tell you next what I want, but for now, it, <laughs> it won't. Yeah, true, mm-hmm. true. And what what was um, like when you see other women pregnant mm-hmm. or, or conceiving, like in your circle, mm. how did you handle that? Uh, for some time, it's not easy. Mm. And especially, I think for me, I was going <clears throat> the opposite eh? because mm. it's not easy and many women prefers not to hide from it. They don't want to interact much with these people who are pregnant because anytime they see them, it's a reminder that myself, cannot. I cannot. Mm. But for me, that time I was living in a version, I think the circle of friends I had, eh? mm. they know any baby shower, I'll be there. <laughs> to help to plan. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any, I didn't feel offended, mm. but by the fact that my peers are conceiving, I was celebrating them because I knew my time will come to be celebrated. Mm. That's the faith I had. So for me, I didn't have any problems. I would help. And I think that thing till today is just something. I've even helped uh, plan baby showers even when I'm not in marriage and uh, I'm not even waiting for anything because now when you're not married, you know you're not waiting. Mm. I said that and someone laughed at me and asked me, ah, you saw it's only in marriage people get children. So Gen Z nowadays, <laughs> they don't know that we only try to conceive when we're in marriage. marriage they they think... told me that's a different language. They're also trying to conceive. Don't talk about the marriage. Talk about trying to conceive. Okay. You know, so, there are even those who go and to do the IVF. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it called? Not the IVF. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they. I think it's the IVF. Mm. They are not married. They just go and select a sperm. And, the donors, yes. Yeah, they the go donors for donors. And, eh? and yeah. others are even donating and they even don't know their cases. Yeah. And they're out there donating their sperm, so they're donating their ov- ovaries mm. and all that. Uh, but I I wish, and I believe that's why we are here. Mm. I wish we can have our girl child well enlightened. 
yeah. and being able to know what is a priority in life mm. and uh, what is risky in life and what is safe to practice in life. Mm. Uh, well, if someone decides not to ever get married, that maybe is a topic for them and their pastor. Mm. Um, but also, if you start donating now, mm. when you're in your 20s, because you go to those centers, <laughs> many of them are in 20s. Because of money. Because of money. Yeah. But you don't know tomorrow mm -hmm. what will turn out and what will happen about your tomorrow. Mm. So, well, it's a choice of how we want to live. Uh, so for me, I didn't have much problem of of attending people's baby shower, even helping to plan them. I didn't have a problem to... Mm. I think the only thing I had gotten addicted to is now me, I had so, gotten so much addicted with baby things, eh? baby mm. stuff, pregnancy. In fact, for me, I knew all the signs of pregnancy. <laughs> I'll tell when my body is reacting in this manner. It's like I'm ovulating. It's like... Then you get attuned mm -hmm. to your body. <laughs> I think today I should be process. working with a guy now. I should be assisting a guy now. <laughs> so I was searching every information. Mm. And uh, of course, I was also doing consultations. I was yearning. And I would, on the TV, the only thing I wanted to watch is about the pregnancy journey. I would tell literally, you know, when you go to YouTube, they show you the first week of conception, mm. what is happened, the second week, until the 14th, 38th. Mm. So for me, those are the things I used to watch. I used to watch a lot of such uh, documentaries of how someone... They fought that and then they conceived mm. how how the IVF procedure is done, all that. And I used to feel so good seeing those oh, the development of a child in the womb. Mm. I used to watch a lot about that. I used to love visiting Kipadam Toto. I'll be the first one to come see the baby even in the hospital. Mm. So, such things used to excite me. Uh, today I'm not so much addicted to watching that uh, such things, mm. but I still feel happy when I see pregnant woman. Yeah. I still feel happy when you t I hear someone I'm a I, I I get so excited. Mm. I want to go hold the baby, especially newborns. I love them. I think I developed that connection all that time because I used to watch a lot of those things when I'm in the house alone. Because in between, when you're going through this treatment, in mm. between there's so many of bed rest. Mm. You need to rest for a week, you need to rest. So you can imagine what I'm doing in the house. Mm. Because I'm just resting, I'm there, it's, there's nothing I'm doing. So it's watching those things. Mm. Mm. Wow. And uh, you never thought of uh, adopting now that the IVF didn't work? Didn't work, huh? Mm. Um, I think the point at which maybe we would have thought of uh, adopting is where now the marriage is not working because mm. also... Um, a child needs to grow up in a healthy space. Yeah. And I would say that my marriage was not a healthy environment, mm -hmm. not for me, not for a child, not even for him. Mm. It wasn't just, it wasn't a healthy place. Eh? Mm. So that environment, it would not have allowed us to, to adopt a child. But even then, mm. we didn't stay, stay long after the failed IVF. Mm. Um, our marriage didn't work. We were... Actually, you were on and off. You were like, then you let me try to work my marriage. Mm. God hates divorce. <laughs> you will never remarry and all that. So you say, ah, let me go back in there and try mm. it again. So there was no time for thinking of adopting. Yeah? In fact, the option we had thought about, I know I've shared this before, um, and I hope you're not going to use this one as the, <laughs> as the title. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> ah, okay. Um, at some point, what we thought was more healthy is allowing my husband to get another woman and make her pregnant. Huh? I didn't have a problem with having a co-wife now. Someone who would, I think it wasn't thinking it today, mm. then it's not like really I needed a co wife. I needed uh, a surrogate woman. Not even a surrogate. A surrogate would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to be so kind. Yeah. 
Okay. You know, I wanted this machine that can. <laughs> so, <laughs> because I'm not sure that I would have been so happy sharing my husband with anyone. Mm-hmm. So, Lily, what I wanted is a machine that can produce what I want. Mm. It's where you feel you're not able to wash your clothes because your back is aching. So, you buy a washing machine. They can do that work for you. So, I think, but then I thought I'm ready for a co wife. Mm. But clearly, I wanted someone who can come and give birth so that my husband is called a dad. Mm. And that, because I don't know why, it normally feels like you have failed your husband if it's the woman who is going through. Mm. Because before even, I remember even before we got to know who has the issue, he already knew and he was already telling me, me sour. until I was asking, do you have a child out? Mm-hmm. How, why are you so <laughs> sure? I <Mini> kosa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, because even now when we started the process, he was also not. I realize men, men, uh, they look like they are strong, but they are not as strong. Eh? Mm. <laughs> men are very weak, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> because the whole thing was traumatizing him. Even yeah. going to the hospital mm. and being told he will do the test, eh? he canceled the first, uh, the first the appointment point. we had. <laughs> when it was him to be tested, sure. he made sure <laughs> that day there was an emergency call from work. <laughs> well, so, but naturally, men think the issue of infertility is for, for women, women, which is a lie. Mm. So it was. It, it's kind. Of, if you have a problem, like if you are not conceiving, even before you know the man is already feeling, mm. or the woman is already feeling, and I also realize sometimes we judge men. When it's not the case, like you're already feeling, my man thinks I'm feeling him. Mm. But you've not even taken a test. So you don't know whether it's you or it's him who has the problem. The problem yeah. So so then the, the, that time I was, uh, I, I was before we go to test, I was mm. already feeling I'm going to fail this. I've already failed this man. I'm not giving back. So that's why I was like, if he gets a co-wife, then get a child, mm. I will have helped him so he will be happy. Mm. So for me, my, my interest had ceased <laughs> to, to matter anymore. It's making him happy. So where were you going to raise the child? Uh, for me, I wanted the... So because I literally meant a co-wife, so mm. she was okay to come. Either to come home or um, anywhere. Yes. Them from yes. Where they are. Uh, but I don't think I would be comfortable her coming home. Mine was like, get a woman, mm. uh, get a place. You At least you can afford even to rent mm. a house, let her be there. But I'll be knowing you have a child mm. and let her respect each other and make her know the reason as to why she's here so mm. that she don't interfere with us. Yeah, That's what I thought. But he was for a different op- opinion. He felt we get, yes, a woman to give us a child, but not for him to marry her. He wanted one who can, who can now the what you are calling surrogacy, yeah. uh, and not the surrogacy a hospital. Like we go search for a woman somewhere, yeah, <laughs> they do their things. <laughs> <laughs> she conceives mm. after conceiving, because you know surrogacy is beautiful. Yeah, because surrogacy is where it would be me and him. Our it's our actually our embryo. Yeah. So this child the woman is carrying is ours. Actually, mm. it's mine biologically. Mm. It's my husband's biologically. That would have also been an option for us mm. because from the uh, from the laboratory and the tests they were doing for the embryo because before they were implanted in me, mm. they were very healthy according to the doctors. Mm. They were very healthy. So there was just something that was not working in me. Mm. So it would also have been an option for us to look for maybe a young girl who is able to we all, or maybe we look for someone. At first, I was thinking maybe like a sister who has already had children. So biologically, naturally, we can tell her reproductive system is imperfect. Mm. Order. So surrogacy would be a good option, actually. Mm. <clears throat> I would recommend it anytime, even one want to take that route. But this kind of a surrogacy that we were talking about, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Mm. Because as they try to look for this child... There are diseases, there is that connection. Um, So that's what he thought. But before we got there, other things just separated us. So we went in different ways. And uh, of course, now he went ahead with the surrogacy. So he's a father. (laughs) (laughs) You want to be the surrogacy or married? (laughs) No, you know, you are trying to make it look good. It's surrogacy. (laughs) 
so I'm using your terms. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. So, so he's now a father. Yes. Awesome. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all good plans. Yeah. I mean. yes, uh, yeah. Yes. And how is your now your 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 children from your husband? Mm-hmm. Your new hu- your your husband. Mm. Yes. Um, they're good. They're okay. Mm. Um uh, as I said, I think it was a package that came. God decided to give me full package so that I don't get in another marriage. Oh, you know, after I I, I broke uh, from my first marriage, mm. it broke my heart so much that I didn't want to do anything with marriage. Mm. I feared marriage because, of course, you know you don't marry someone you don't love. Yeah. And then you've lost them and you're also feeling, apart from losing the person you loved, you have also lost. There is the dignity of a woman having a child mm. according to the society. Mm. So I was feeling lost eh? mm. and I didn't want anything to do with the marriage. And the first thing God did was to heal me about the ch- the child issue. Yeah. So at some point I was, and, and by the way, uh, most of the time when we are separated with my husband, I would mm. start feeling peace because it's Kaida. I wanted to get a child eh? mm. to make him happy. Mm. That was, no, that was the, the, the real drive for me. Mm. So when I'm not with him, so I have no pressure like mm. of getting a child. There's nothing that is really pressurizing me to get a child. So I was I was okay. And the Lord took me through the journey of healing and accepting myself and coming back to my self-esteem because I left that marriage so broken with the low self-esteem. Mm. I thought I don't deserve to live. I don't deserve to be loved. I don't deserve anything that a woman should enjoy in life. Mm. So the Lord took me the healing of child. But the healing of marriage beat, I think it has taken long. Mm. I always feel, sometimes I would feel like, well, I can try, I think I'm okay. And then you come and you approach me. And I think like we can do something. Mm -hmm. But later I'm like, and I tell you, you know, I don't get children. And you okay, me, I have no problem with that. Mm-hmm. But then I think and I say, hmm, that's what they say. They have no problem. <laughs> then <laughs> when you get there. <laughs> then you get there. So I used to the issue of marriage was not a thing for me. Mm-hmm. And actually I wanted to live single. Um but one thing I was saying is even if I ever get married, I want to get married to someone who has children. So that the issue of a child will never resurface yeah. in my life. I'm yeah. not trying to conceive anymore. Because for me today, let me tell you the truth. Even if I had the best doctor, has relocated from India where they are doing the best treatment and he's in Kenya. Mm. And all machineries are there at my neighborhood, I'll not go. Because I have found peace with myself that mm. I'm okay the way I am. If God decides to bless me, let him, decide, let him bless me as I am. Mm. But I'm not trying anything else. So for that reason, I didn't want someone who may want to give me options of maybe we can do this, maybe we can try this. Sure. Yeah, so when now I met this man, uh, one of... Definitely the qualification is that he has children. Mm-hmm. So you're not asking me to get children. <laughs> you're not asking me to get children for you. Mm. So what else do you want from me? <laughs> well, from Just your bed, being a wife. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I fought for that, about that issue for such a long time. Mm. But in God's time, everything happens. And so today I'm happy. I um I have... Uh, three children. I have wow. six grandchildren. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> <Even> grandchildren. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So I am a grandma uh-huh. and I'm at peace with it. And wow. I'm happy. In fact, today if we got pregnant, it would be a surprise. Like, oh, okay. It can because it's not one. in our list of, <laughs> of the things that we want yeah. to, to achieve. But should God decide, mm. who are we? And have they embraced you? Yes, yes. Mom. Yes, yes. I thank God so much because so uh, uh, they are adult children by the way. Of course, now you can hear my grandma. Uh, so being a yeah. grandma means <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dealing with the yeah. children, Lily. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think God's, the, God's blessings when they start coming, 
uh, they come in double portions. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, because for me, I think I was given the blessings when they are overflowing because also women will fight with the fact that you want to get married to someone who has children, but they are not accepting it. They are fighting it. But for me, I saw them coming. They were on the line for the bridal team. I saw them coming for every meeting. They came for the dowry. Like they have been there every step with their dad. Awesome. Even the time, the time I went for the introduction, they had a cake to welcome me and they had not met me before. Oh. But what they said, what came out, out of their mouth, the three of them is that, um, since their dad started talking about me, because of course we got to know each other before they appear, mm. they know there is someone, yeah. but they said they had noticed that difference, that their father now nowadays is very happy. Mm. Anytime you want to tell them, <laughs> he want, he's meeting me, he's very happy telling them I want, I'm going to meet Susie. So they were looking forward to meet this who Susan, is this who Susie? is really making their dad <laughs> happy. <laughs> yeah. Happy. And uh, so I felt a very, me, I received a very warm welcome. Mm. And uh, so far, seven months down the line, we are doing good. We are mm. doing good. Mm. We are all happy. I would say we are all happy. Definitely, they are going, they are still going through the pain of the loss of their mom. Mm. And even the husband, my husband is going through the pain because it's barely three years mm. since he lost his wife. Mm. So he's also going through that. But in it all, we are good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you are all going in the process of healing. Yes, we are all in the process. Actually, my husband says that he's my therapy, I am his therapy. Mm. So we are therapizing each other. <laughs> 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 and I also think even now for the children, it's a lesser um, burden for lack of a better word mm. because I don't think they want to say their dad was a burden to them, but it's less for them when they know their dad Someone. Is some well, yes, there's someone he is with mm. because now you see now they are grown up, so they want to leave home and go yeah. do their things. Mm. So the fact that you're thinking your dad is home lonely, you also don't. So I I believe as we say we are doing a therapy to each other. Mm. It is also therapeutic to them. Yes, that now they have to just concentrate with the healing about the loss of their mom, mm. but they are not so much worried about, about their, their dad. Father. Yes, yeah, it's true. It's mm. true. Wow. Okay, so in this journey, um, what is the most uh, from from the from the first marriage? Um, yeah, actually, that he that that process. What is the most painful thing that you experienced during that uh, journey? Hmm. The most uh, painful experience, of course, is the fact that you're not able to conceive. Infertility was a giant in the room. Mm. Infertility was the most painful, painful experience. And it was sometimes getting more painful when you feel like the person you're supposed to be going through with this, mm. it's like he's not with you in this. Mm -hmm. And it's like he has, he already has options on how he can get out of it. And these options don't include you. Yeah. So you will, he will finally be happy, but what about you? So realizing that you're not able to fight as a team, mm -hmm. it's you, it's your battle to fight. Mm. That was so painful for me. And uh, through that process, what would cause me much pain is when someone uses my weakness, the wood that I'm nursing is the one they use now for any other thing mm -hmm. like if you're not happy with me you want to remind me i cannot conceive and you want to to feel like i remember one time i was told i'm even glad you don't have children i wouldn't ah. have wanted to have a child uh, who may be as stupid as you what so you're like okay you know many are times when we would have that's why i'm saying it had a big a problem in it because many a times we are arguing of something very different mm. then this issue comes from nowhere it is drawn on your face so it's like until you get a child you cannot resolve any other thing mm. because it will still keep coming in yeah. that and uh, 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 I remember one time we had our differences and uh, I was told uh, maybe you should go out and try other men and now i'm saying it in a polite way because i'm <laughs> <laughs> the cameras are on <laughs> uh, you go and try other different men and see maybe one of them will make you pregnant really 
So, and you know very well the problem is not yeah, it is the not manhood the man. in him. Mm. So these are the manhoods you were told to go and sample. You know, those were painful moments when someone wanted to get on you, but the only thing they can get on you with is this okay, so that you're going through. And not only from, even from like friends, from some family members. And that's why you find women uh, who are fighting this, sometimes they fight maybe depression mm. because it's like everyone who want to hit you, they want to use that. Yeah. And it's something you have no control about. Mm. Yes. What <laughs> people can be cruel, yes, people can be very, very cruel, not knowing that. Uh, but I just realized the other day because, like I mentioned, maybe uh, it's okay for me to mention here, I'm mm-hmm. on YouTube also, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was uh, with someone, uh, uh, we were doing an interview, and I realized, oh, it's kind of uh, I didn't even get some of these things, <laughs> mine was not as bad eh? mm-hmm. because a woman is saying that she's seated somewhere. Mm-hmm. They are in um, the, in the, you know, in the village when there is a function, the way you go and sit somewhere with people, and then your husband is here, you are here, and the other family members. Then there, there is a dog that is breastfeeding, and you decide to hit it so that it doesn't, you know, a dog they are breastfeeding mm. and all that. Mm. You hit it, mm. and your husband decides to tell you, but you know that dog is very important than you. Oh, yeah. Can you see it is breastfeeding? <laughs> really? Imagine. So people have passed through stuff. And then I was like, oh, I think mine was a bit easier. <laughs> it was lighter. <laughs> yeah, but mine was lighter. <laughs> That's why it is important actually to How talk How do you out. compare someone with a dog? Imagine. Sure. Imagine. And she's being told in presence of other people. So people can be cruel, forgetting mm. that uh, that's not the only issue in life. Yeah. Did you, actually, that's why I, I ask women, why you... Why do you want to lose yourself in this? And it's not the only thing in life. There are so many things to fight for mm-hmm, in life. Mm-hmm. Because I was wondering, like, you husband, we still in that person that a dog is more important than them mm-hmm. because they fathers. have infertility. Do you know you yourself, you might be fertile because maybe you have sired other children out there, mm-hmm. but fertility is not the only issue. Tomorrow you could be fighting cancer. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow you could be fighting a bigger issue. You yeah. could go out there and get an accident and now you're there. Mm-hmm. You need this woman to take care of you. So for someone to think this is the worst that and this is the worst case scenario, it's a lie. There's yeah. so many other things that can happen to someone in life. There are so many people True. in hospital who are fighting for their lives. Mm-hmm. You're here, you're thinking to kill yourself because you cannot get a child. Go and fight someone who is fighting cancer and so painful and they are wishing if 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 you told them you want to die, mm. they can ask see we switch they the know. cases. <laughs> <laughs> you come and you die. Come and die. Me, I Let me live living. without a child. I'm okay to yeah. live without a child. Mm. So that's the only not the only thing. That's why people should not allow themselves to get depressed. They should not allow them to themselves to kill themselves because mm. of that. And also you should not allow someone to stumble on you just because you cannot get a child. Yeah. Me, I don't, I don't advocate divorce. Neither do I advocate separations in marriage. Mm. Uh, but I am a firm believer of, uh, I go against stupidity and foolishness. Because if, if because of the infertility, you want to make me stop living, mm. everything else in my life must stop. Mm. And now if I want to be happy, I have to be very key careful with you i don't hurt you i don't step on you rather you remind me mm. you're stepping on me and you cannot even give birth what does it have to do my stepping you and giving birth mm-hmm. whether it is a relationship mm. so what are we really doing with you in the house yeah when someone is feeling like most of the women will say i also felt experience it when a woman and a man is telling you even if you left my house you'll go nowhere who is this man would accept a barren woman and you believe the lie so you are agreeing to every foolishness and mm. everything negative. You're agreeing to it because there is no any other man who will love you. But why do you want to be loved by other men? For what? Mm-hmm. Because if, if marriage is your thing, I had someone saying the problem we have nowadays is because there are people who are never called for marriage and they are in marriages, that's why they are fights. <laughs> And he was arguing <laughs> that it is biblical. <laughs> some of, <laughs> some of people hey, okay. are not created for marriage. I don't know how true it is. But Lily, if you're not happy, 
don't die in there. Mm. Don't die in there. God hates divorce and he also detests foolishness. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's mm. true. Yeah, and also yeah, I think if you if your partner is not giving you value mm-hmm. when when you when you 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 met your two mm-hmm. children a third party mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so they will go mm-hmm. they will go as well mm-hmm. even if they are there so if you don't get them appreciate that partner mm-hmm. that god gave you mm-hmm. and live together i i always say the vows that we make mm-hmm. We make them on at the altar, mm. but when they they really happen in real life, mm. we forget. True, we forget because mm. now, like that person, surely comparing Imagine. your spouse with a dog, a dog, just because a dog is breastfeed. No, what is that? You see, I was even wondering. Thank God we didn't mention the name. So even as I ask this, I am not biased to him, or, because I have I actually don't know who mm. he is. Yeah? Mm. But I'm wondering. He doesn't deserve to be a father to anyone. Yeah. You can imagine if a child would hear such a man talking. Now, me, I think I would even wouldn't want to get because now, really, those words, the words that you are talking, mm. they are not equivalent to what we are trying to solve. If we are, if we are trying to solve infertility, it has no relationship. Yeah. With well, infertility <laughs> and what? And why would you even compare someone with an animal? Imagine. Well, but those are pains <laughs> that women have endured. Mm. Because what will you do? She didn't leave her marriage because of that. She stayed and she was waiting to get children so that she can at least improve her value to adults. To the man. No. And uh, to adults. <laughs> yeah. Where? <laughs> because the reason the dog get, is valuable. Did she get that? No, she didn't get. No. Um, also, there is that bit, I believe, because the word of God is true. Mm. And the word of God, as it is, it is. Like it doesn't change. And so when he says that he commands blessings where there is unity, yeah. it is as it is. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine such a scenario. So they didn't get a child. And so finally she she was told to leave. She tried to wait and um, agree to everything. Mm. Anything that is drawn to her. But the way we are told by our mothers, if I knew Jinga too, so you know what you want. Puma must be off. You put up a yend. Yend. Puna Jaribu in a pit at Wina end. But Kuna, this what is happening in you. Health. Yes, there is your mental health that you mm. need to take care of. Mm. So it's until the man felt like she will never leave this one. Let me tell her to leave. So she was told, pack and leave. And we thank God because for her she was told to pack and leave. There are those who have been killed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, hey. Life. Okay. It's and life. now how is how is your healing process or because I know you are still healing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are still healing. Mm-hmm. How is your healing process? Mm-hmm. But I I know you have healed at a point mm-hmm. because you coming out and mm-hmm. speaking about it mm-hmm. openly, it means that there is a part of you that have healed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how is that healing process? How did it happen? And how long did it take? Mm-hmm. Or is still on the on the track <laughs> on the track <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i think i would be justified to say that i am completely healed i'm not i wouldn't say that i'm still on the process eh? oh. i would say i'm completely healed oh. of course when you heal you have wounds mm. and so those are the wounds that i'm exposing those are the wounds the that scars. the scars yes mm. it's the scars that i'm i'm showing yeah Thank you, because the wood is already healed. Yeah. Actually, completely. I don't think there's anything mm. that would make me feel pain when it comes on that side. Okay. Telling me I'm, I'm barren. Mm. I'm already saying it. So you cannot tell me and make me feel pain. <laughs> <laughs> tell them I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, did you hear me saying it? Or you have just discovered, mm. you know? Mm. So uh, there's nothing, and if you want to tell me that for any, I don't know. Um, I remember someone who told me that even my marriage cannot. No, they told me because I used to fight a lot mm. with my ex, eh? mm. and then after fighting, we'd still come back together. Um, 
Hmm. Marriages, what can I do now? Let me yeah. tell you, if someone comes to your house and they want you to shelter them because they have left their husband, just do that. Shelter them. Mm. But don't try to hold them, not to go back to that man. Whether you hold them or not, they will still go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just host them, <laughs> give them food, <laughs> let them eat. Wait for that time, they'll give you a shock. <laughs> and go back. In the morning, you left and you're saying that maybe we need to think of a business mm. now that you are single mm. and they are agreeing with you. <laughs> And they are telling you, me, I even don't want to hear anything to do with marriage. <laughs> Before it's lunch time, yeah. you see a message on your phone. Mm. I'm in Thika. My husband called me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I saw, did tell me that... Um, because I felt so bad that I have gone back to that man who is really treating me bad. Mm. So the only thing they could try is to get something that I can make me feel so bad. So they told me, I think you even enjoy that infertility thing so much. And I'm like, no, what does infertility have to do with me going back to my husband? Mm -hmm. What would you tell me I'm enjoying it? And for sure, you know, I'm not enjoying it. So there are those times that people would, and that thing would Actually, it did crush me. That's why unaona mpaka leo I remember it because mm, it was hard on me. Yeah. So that those days, such things could make me feel pain. But today, even if you tell me I enjoy infertility, I will still listen to you. I want to hear more. What else do you have to say? Mm. That is a statement you are starting. I want to hear more. What is mm. informing you this and all that? So today, I am completely healed. I don't have. Anywhere you can touch and remind me I don't have a child because I have not forgotten. I don't think I'll ever forget. Mm. So anything that is trying to make me remind me is playing a fool on yourself. Eh? Mm. The journey of healing, I would only say it's God and support. Yeah. One thing I tell people is that it's good to talk to people. The reason as to why sometimes we don't talk to people is because you open up to Amanda thinking that she's feeling what you're feeling, she's your friend, she can keep your secret. Then she she goes to Chama, she tells him, Shiro, and don't tell the other one. Then the <laughs> other one tells Wajiko, and don't tell the other one. Yeah. At the end of the day, everybody knows, knows. your problem. Yeah. So now tomorrow you have a problem, you say, I'll not share with anyone, because the other one I shared, and they talked. Huh? Yeah. But you know what, me normally say, whether you're telling us your problem or not, we will still talk. Because we'll sit down and we start calculating. She did her wedding on when? <laughs> July. We are in what? I think it's two years. And they're arguing. We'll fight people arguing. No, it was in 20. It was. It is three years now. Mm. And you have not said anything to them. So whether you tell them or you don't, we will still do. Yeah. Because that are the things that makes life lively. Mm. Even me, I will still calculate, by the way. My sister, the other day, she got a child and I was telling her, I want to calculate because I know the date of your wedding. I still can't remember the date of your wedding. <laughs> I want to be sure. If you are not pregnant <laughs> by then. <laughs> Those are the things that makes life happy. Yeah. So whether you tell us or you don't, we will still talk. Yes. But the advantage of you telling us, or not really us, because you don't go shouting mm -hmm. your issues, mm -hmm. the advantage is that it becomes a lesser burden to you. Mm. And you even realize, maybe you're talking to someone and you're thinking them, they are happy, and then they open up to you. Then you realize, this thing, I'm not fighting alone. Mm. Like now when I opened about my infertility, so many women are telling me, you know me, I've always had the fear of talking about it. But I'm happy that you're talking about it. So, and then we are laughing someone, we are saying, to Kowengi, mm. we, <laughs> you know, when you realize that there is that comfort that comes. Yeah. So me, I'll tell someone, talk. Because for me, for sometimes I was not talking, but definitely I had a strong, strong support mm. system from my parents, from my family members, because they were all in with me in mm. the process. Eh? Mm. So as we kept talking and discussing these things with them, as it reached a point where now it is so open, mm. what I'm going through, so I'm able to share with, I, I was introduced to um, a, a group that um, has, uh, they call them, I think they call themselves, it's a wells, uh, I, I think waiting whoops or something. Yeah? Mm. 
uh, no, there, there are women who adapt, who have already adopted children. They call them the children of the heart or something. Like they have given birth through their heart, not mm. through their womb. Mm. Uh, so, and I met those couples. They were happy. They were giving the experiences of how they tried and they decided finally to adopt and all that. Mm. When you meet such people, now you're able to talk. Yeah. It helps a lot. Mm. So for me, I think that one helped me when I started now talking with those people who can relate with my issues and also now the family coming in, praying with me and encouraging me. The only thing I, I didn't want to hear then, but today Aki plays my family members start telling me that. <laughs> they used to tell me, Susie, you're very beautiful, you're young, what is it that is causing, and that time I'm feeling bit. I don't want this beauty, I don't want the youth, I want yeah. a child, that's yeah. all I want, you know. But as much as I didn't want to hear them, those words were settling somewhere. Yeah. So they were building my esteem. So the best thing is associate with the right people, yeah. that is what really helped me. My family prayed with me. Mm. Even if you feel at some point what they are saying is not making sense, allow those words to still continue coming into mm. your ears because mm. consciously or unconsciously they are settling somewhere and mm. they are speaking to your spirit. And your spirit is getting courage, the courage mm. that you are strong, you are beautiful, you are young, you have a future. There was a time I had contemplated taking myself. Actually, I've tried it twice. Eh? And I remember one time my dad felt so much pain and we were in a family meeting and he asked me, is it that that's the only person who matters in your life? Like everybody else in this family don't mm. count in your life. Mm. And that did hit me. That's the only reason I want to kill myself. And one of my sister told me, my elder sister doesn't uh, in Kikuyu, Tunasemanga, Haweki ya kesho. Mm. She will not keep it to tell you tomorrow. She's telling you now. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> Hado it now, now. If you're hardering, if you're not, yeah. you're hearing it now. Mm. So she she was also like, when dad said that, because I think it was such a painful time for them to interpret that I can die yeah. because of a man. Mm. So she asked me, so you think if you died, that is the only man who would be crying in your barrio. Nobody else will be feeling the pain of your death. And then she was like, do you know he would not even attend your barrio? Mm -hmm. So now, that time, at least some senses was being spoken to mm. me. It would be a difficult time, maybe I'm not able to understand. Because that time they are talking like that, I'm feeling, but you don't understand my pains. You yeah. don't know what I'm going through. I wish you knew. Mm. But now today I look back and I see, I was such an <laughs> ignorant girl. No, you are not ignorant. What was that? If it was not ignorant, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was the moment that you are going through. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course, uh, taking your life, that was quite something. <laughs> you agree with me, I was ignorant. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Hey, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no. It was, that was bad huh? yeah. to think. Mm. But you want to make it look better? You want to call it what? No, no, no. I mean, mm. the, the, <laughs> the not understanding, like... Um, you not uh, uh, getting the words of affirmation that your family was giving you mm. that time. You know you are going through pain. You yes, are going yes. through uh, a season mm. that not everyone goes through. Yes. So uh, unless someone has gone through the same, mm. they could understand exactly yes. what you are feeling. Yes, yes. But for them, they have not gone through. Of mm. course, we, we, we people try to make you... Um, reason mm -hmm. and see the future not not here, not here yeah, yeah, yeah not yeah. here mm -hmm. so uh, that is why they were telling you what they were telling you mm -hmm. and um they didn't mean bad mm -hmm. at all because mm -hmm. they cared about you mm -hmm. and everything they talked about mm -hmm. was true <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was true. Because when you check and you'll be like, why am I even suffering for someone who doesn't care for me? Imagine. Imagine. Because at that time, you've been told as you were packing to leave, they are telling you, can you go and I will get another person before you reach your parents' home. Sure. Then you want to kill for the same person. For the same person. <laughs> who doesn't care. I think I was, hey, you said I was not ignorant. Okay, I was naive. Let's try to be better. <laughs> <laughs> to that, to that Susan that, of them, that, eh? yeah, and and you also know you don't say. Uh, I wouldn't say that they they didn't understand my pains because they have not experienced. What I would say is that 
it me who was so blurred by my pain, mm. I was not seeing tomorrow. So at least for them, yeah. they were seeing things more clearly than but I do. You. Because as much as they are not able to feel my pain, because for sure, we cannot we cannot feel someone's pain. Mm. We could be even be going through the same thing. You're going through infertility, I'm going, but my pain is very different with your pain. So, yeah, yeah. But then, even though we don't feel your pain, we are sober, we can see mm-hmm. that okay, we don't know how it feels to be infertile, but at least we know you don't deserve to die. Yeah. Just because you're infer- mm. Because even if you died, you're not going to give birth in that degree. So what is the solution? <laughs> <laughs> in heaven, there are no children. There are no children. Imagine. <laughs> I hope there will also be no wives and husbands. No. <laughs> <laughs> they are not. Ah, they are not. <laughs> they are just singing, worshiping. Because I was wondering if there will be. Uh, and you see, in church, you go and you find so many women are serving in church, and there are very few men serving in church. Then you're wondering. Already here, we are suffering, saying that uh, women are many than men, yeah. and it looks like again, huko it will be more worse. The case, <laughs> the situation. Ama <laughs> walitangulia. <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> God does the math. Mm. So you're asking whether my healing journey, how it has been. Mm. Of course, it hasn't been easy, but it's possible. It is doable. What I would want to tell someone is that it is doable mm. and it is possible to heal. The only thing you don't do is uh, work towards healing, but don't force the healing. Yeah. Accept that at this moment, I'm so much in pain. Accept the pain mm. and leave you know, when you feel the pain, leave the way when you feel the pain. If you, if someone slaps you, whether you wanted to cry, you might just feel yourself crying, mm. you know, because the pain is there. Mm. So don't pretend like there is no pain. Yeah. Don't pretend like you're okay because it won't help. Mm. Live like someone with pain, how they live. When they feel like crying, they cry. Yes. When they feel they want someone to listen to them, mm. talk, listen to them. Uh, talk to people. Mm. If you feel like you want to, the only thing I say is don't do something that is harmful to your life, Mm. but anything else, enjoy life to the fullest. If you feel today how I'm feeling, I'm not even able to work. Ask for that off day Mm. from the office. Like act like, accept this is the time I'm feeling pain and allow that pain to flow. Mm. Because with that, after you cry, you get headache, Nakunwa, any good. You know, there are days I would cry. Then I wake up, I'm having a headache. Now yeah. I have to again use, look Let's for medication. See. I look at myself in the mirror, my the eyes are so swollen and nothing has changed. I am crying because I am in my periods. But I wake up, I have a headache that I need to nurse. Mm. My eyes are swollen, but I still have to go and look for a sanitary pad. Because the periods are still there. So it's mm. not going to change anything, but it's a process. We allow it to come. Mm. I used to hate periods so much. I used to wish there is a way. Well, up to date, I wish there is a way they can just stop. <laughs> I don't know. Menopause. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Wait for menopause. <laughs> I feel like it's too far, but then it has its complication. Yeah. I want to wear naturally. Yache too late. See, men of course, in Yetaku and Amashi, does that get now? Yeah, I think I used to have issues with periods because they are, is a, they are a reminder of what is happening. Yeah. So I used to hate them so much. Today, I think I'm okay with it. Mm. So my healing journey has been, I would say, it's perfect because now I'm healed completely. Mm. Um, I'm not just healed because I have uh, now the the the. Um, the no, I wouldn't say adopted. Are they adopted lady? I wouldn't say now because I have my husband's children. That's why I'm healed. Yeah? Mm. Because I don't want you know, one who is maybe going through that difficult. Now they start looking for it to a time they'll get a man with children and all that because it will it may not help. To, to heal, eh? mm. but my healing came from accepting my situation. Yeah, having the right people around me, mm. and now opening up. In fact, when you open up, you no longer have the 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 burden of trying to hide because people would start maybe telling you, "Oh, by the way, you did the wedding." Ah, so so to me, figure out which number you because maybe they don't, and they are very innocent. Mm. And as much as I keep telling people it's not good to ask people that, people will still ask you. Yeah, we are human beings. 
Because you still ask you. <laughs> they saw you last when you were inviting them for your wedding in 2012. Mm. They are meeting you in 2024. Yeah, don't judge them when they ask you some mm. kona bangabi. Because they don't know. I'm a fika shulenga. I'm a fika class. I'm a fika class gun. Yeah. But when you open up now, it's known. No, they cannot ask you that. Mm. But as long as you keep hiding it, you'll keep lying. A lie after the other. Because sometimes I used to lie. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. because now you you don't want to expose yourself mm. that you are not able to conceive so you find your ways of lying mm. so the time you are going to so you keep looking for lies so the, the, the good thing with talking is that there is a burden that also is relieved from me mm. yes yeah and also for those who are going uh, <clears throat> what can you tell the, um, the women, the couples mm-hmm. that are going through the same? And uh, just the way you say the infertility is considered more for women, mm. but also men, <laughs> they are infertile. Some of them, mm. I mean, some of them, a number of them, they don't know mm. because they say that it's the women who knows the child, the father of the child. Abisa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, there might be some surrogates. <laughs> <laughs> Women, <laughs> and, the hu- and the husbands think that they are... Yeah, they are child, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so uh, mm-hmm. what, what can you tell uh, women out there and men who are going through the same mm-hmm. and um, uh, who are going through infertility and... Um, how they can just overcome like that that uh, pain and the waiting and yeah mm. the way God has has gave gave you the <clears throat> the grace to accept mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yes oh. as much as it took long mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a journey man actually the reason as to why uh, women would be unfaithful and make a man to think that a child is her husband when it's not. It's because of this belief that if you don't have a child, you're failing your husband. And maybe it's even the husband who has an issue. Uh, But if we agreed and accepted, because the truth of the matter is, it's not just the woman who can be having an infertility issue. Even men, it's affecting. It's only that men don't talk a lot. And also that's the reason why men die early, because they also don't talk a lot, uh, especially when they are going through hard time. Uh, I'm not saying talking a lot of really 1,000 words and 2,000 words <laughs> a day. I'm talking of when someone is going through hard time. Mm. The, the women, because we talk about it, it is easy for us to handle. Um the reason why women now will hide it from you is because they know it's you who have the problem. They know you are the one who is infertile. But again, you will still victimize them if they stayed without children. And because the society will also be too harsh on a man who is not able to conceive, mm. they decide to hide their husband so that they don't suffer the shame. And that's why they go out, they get children, and they bring home, and you, you're thinking, I mean, they get pregnant, they come home, and you're thinking, this is my child. But if we normalize the fact that infertility can affect anyone, either a man, either a woman, if we normalize that, even the issues of uh, unfaithfulness for the wom- for the women, it would go down where a woman has given, it keeps giving birth from outside to make a man feel complete that mm. they have children. Mm. So I would say that I wish we can accept the truth of the matter. The fact is that our fertility problem affect both men and women. Yeah. And then once we accept that, we also accept that infertility is a challenge like any other challenge in life. Yeah. If you cannot leave your wife because they have they don't have a job, if you cannot leave your wife because they broke their leg, it's the same thing you should not uh, take your wife through a hard time or your husband through a hard time mm. just because he's not able to conceive or to uh, make you pregnant. Mm. Uh, for those who are going through it already, what I would say that time and God will heal you, yeah. but refuse. Refuse to make this the only thing you're thinking in life. Refuse that 
without a child you cannot be happy whether you are a man and uh, someone was sharing with me and they said they want to go far they actually they have left the country because he's a man and he cannot face the fact that he's not able to conceive mm. and i was thinking where you go you still know that you're not able to give uh you you you, you have an issue with making a woman conceive mm-hmm. so whether you run away from the problem you still carry the problem with you it's not going to end so i would think the thing is the best thing is you face it brave on yourself mm-hmm. face the problem mm-hmm. agree happen to you and this is how things are and let now god and time heal you and for sure there is healing i know it may look uh because when you're in a problem at that time you feel like whatever people are saying it's not doable but trust the process keep hold on in there don't kill yourself don't allow yourself to die with depression but hold in there one day you look back and you say wow the lord has healed me and now i can talk like suzy i can be as happy as suzy with or without children wow that is really quite something mm. thank you so much suzy i mm. i know i know so many outside there are suffering mm. and now there is this uh, and and metriosis yes. sickness that has it, it has been there mm-hmm. but now it has just become known mm. because of uh, the, the the lady who died jambia jambia yes mm. so the women are experiencing a lot of uh, issues mm-hmm. fertility mm-hmm. issues mm-hmm. and sicknesses mm-hmm. yeah so you talking about one of them mm-hmm. it is really an encouragement mm-hmm. and um uh, we we serve a living god and i know <laughs> you, you never know <laughs> you never know that's true you never know <laughs> one day you might Maybe come I, back and be like i may come here, here and say i cannot baby. sit here because i'm sitting <laughs> you know me i normally say if i get pregnant i would start wearing those uh, uh, maternity dresses from the first month eh? and i'll be wondering Kwani hawaoni. You know. Kwani hawaoni. Kwani hawaoni. Okay, sasa hii ni poti ya tubo but when that time sita ifinya atina troza na nini? The first man, you know the other day I had posted the boat a photo with my uh, with my niece, uh, my mm. nephew actually mm. and people thought it was my child and I was telling them, you think I am able I would be able to hide this at I'm surprising you when the baby is born. Uh-uh. No. Way. <laughs> You will know the first man because <laughs> I'll be saying you change the dress I cannot code. eat that yes the dress code will change uh-huh. the way I talk I talk like a pregnant <laughs> woman <laughs> no, I will eat no like onion. a pregnant we'll be no onion. whether it is affecting me or not <laughs> I know women when they are pregnant they hate the scent of this oh, yeah, so yeah. I'll be saying no onions <laughs> in the house <laughs> I'll be uh, visiting and I'll be saying because I am expectant mm, maybe you need to give me fruits before you prepare before. food. <laughs> I'm telling you everything would change. <laughs> All that I have read about please visit me please visit me. <laughs> Do not like me then because no no no, no. I'll be anything I have read about a pregnant woman uh, it will be time for me to exercise. No that would be a precious child. Imagine I would have wanted to exercise that 10 years. You know if it comes today mm-hmm. what I would have done those 10 years because you can imagine <laughs> if I got my first child in 2014 mm-hmm. by now maybe I'd be having two more yeah. so maybe by now I'd be a mother of three mm-hmm. or four mm-hmm. I wanted three children but maybe I would be a mother of four mm-hmm. so assuming I'm a mother of four so those are four pregnancies that I have carried and I hear they say every pregnancy have different experiences yeah. so if I get pregnant today all the experience I'll combine them <laughs> <laughs> you combine I'll everything combine. everything yes uh, i will make sure my husband wakes up at 3 am <laughs> i want mutura <laughs> where <laughs> and now she be ready and not from that hotel so he better be ready if he want to try anything i know <laughs> You should be careful you know his dealings you know i have a friend mm-hmm. she used to, to to wake up the husband mm-hmm. to go and get there is this bread i don't know what which supermarket was it bread 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 oh bread mm, the hot bread when they have finished breaking <laughs> she wanted it hot yes 
and the husband used to go. <laughs> Thank you, adding the list as to the things that I would demand. <laughs> so, Mr. Moshiri, if you dare do that thing, you better be ready. You better be ready. I will. So, there's no way me I will surprise people. At I have waited, then at I have hidden my pregnancy, uh, then at um, one day I'm. Sure, surprise! I got a child. No, we will walk this journey with all of you. <laughs> I tell them today I'm not able to shoot mm. because the baby has said no. No, we are not shooting. <laughs> or I will shoot eating. Uh, yes, or I shoot. The baby says I should. Or the baby says I should sit. I should shoot when I'm sitting on his dad's lap. <laughs> so that is it. Well, <laughs> that would be a good one. <laughs> I would want to, to I would want to see that. To see that experience. Yes. <laughs> um, but one thing I would want to say mm-hmm. is that when um, two people come together and decide they want to get married, first of all, they need to prepare themselves for everything. Yeah. What comes with marriage? That yeah. marriage comes with children. And don't tell me that I'm telling people not to have faith in God. I have faith in God myself. Mm. It's not true that all those women and men who are fighting infertility, they don't they have don't faith have in faith, God. Yeah. They have faith in God. Yeah. So as I say this, I'm not saying, I'm telling people don't have faith in God. So uh, what I would say is that as you get married, prepare yourself for everything. That children will come, what will you feed them? Oh, mm-hmm. Don't just look at you, the love you're feeling and all that. Because what will happen, because sometimes you may even think we will get married when you even don't have, any job or anything mm. to eat, mm. then we will we use family planning so we will not bring children. Sometimes it can fail and you get pregnant. Mm. So you must be ready. As you think of settling down in a marriage, whether you're a man or a woman, are you able to feed a child should they come? Mm. You should also be ready of the other side of the story. Would you be okay if your wife, if your spouse is not able to conceive? Yeah. Would you be okay if your man is important, Mm -hmm. what would happen? Mm -hmm. Those are things, the questions you should include in the preparations of getting married. And I think this should be even in, be included when it comes to to Nito Yeah, primarito. Before counseling. you get married, eh? mm. that you should be ready to accept anything. anything. When we are told that even if your partner changes, because most of the time in primarito we are told don't look the physical because maybe when you get married they can get an accident and then they disfigured. I think it should also be said you may. F- Get there and if they are not able to get children, mm. what would happen? Mm. Would you want so that if you feel for sure you're not ready to live with someone who cannot give you children, as if you know whether you, you can get, eh? mm-hmm. but if for sure you feel you cannot, then uh, be the person who agrees not to get married before you get children. Yeah. So that. And also, mm-hmm. you, can, you can get one, mm-hmm. but number two, asikuje. Mm-hmm. Number three, asikuje. asikuje. Yes. You can also get one, God forbid, to anyone who is giving birth and they die. Mm. And now you're not able to get a second one. Yeah. So what will happen? Exactly. So it's good for any couple, every couple to prepare themselves for every outcome and enter into marriage when you're very, very ready for anything mm. and very mature to handle everything. Of course, you cannot be complete in everything, like so very well prepared. Mm. But when you know what to expect and the things to get ready, you will have the right people to associate with. You will talk with mature people. You will engage in counseling sessions for you to know now how will I handle this because it's true, it's tough. Mm. So how will I handle this? Mm. Now, once you get into marriage uh, and... Me especially, I, I want to talk to girl child and say that it's good to know your body yeah. and it's good to be very careful mm. with what is happening in your body. Let us not live in the eras when there were so many maids, unambua, at when your periods are painful, it means you're very fertile, it means when you get bad, they really? will disappear. <laughs> yeah. Heard of that. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of that. Fertile. Yes. <laughs> and if your periods are painful, you fertile. Okay. And then t- s- some maid says that if you have pains, when you give birth, the pains will disappear. Mm-hmm. You'll no longer have them. Instead of just believing anything, why don't you? We have gainers who are very yeah. available every town, every center today. Mm. get the right information get to know what is happening with my body if you have let not someone tell you that every woman is feeling pain when they have periods Mm. it's not true and if they have them they know why so for you don't agree to say because she normally have pains it's okay for me to have pains Mm. me i would say that uh 
get to know your body, visit a gynae, don't just go to any hospital. Yeah. I'm saying this especially for women because ours is a bit complicated yeah. and we have different, there are so many things that causes infertility in women as well as in men. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, but for a woman, uh, uh, it's good to, because some, some cases, they could be worsening. Yeah. When you are still seated there and saying, mm. maybe wakati ni tapata mtoto, maybe wakati, instead of guessing with your body, it's better you spend, save some money. I know sometimes getting to a gyna might be a costly, expensive. maybe you need 2,000, 4,000 just for consultation, mm. save towards that. Mm. So that even as you're doing your marriage, you know your body, you know what is happening. Yeah. And if uh, for any challenge to come, you know where to start. You're not so blind in it. Uh. Because that's when you, you realize, even sometimes you someone get married, they get pregnant, they miscarry, they are not talking to anyone, they are not telling anyone, they are saying it's God doing, so we will wait for the next time, we'll try next time. And you actually have not even, even if it was just one month, uh. You you saying it was not even no one had noticed I'm pregnant and all that. It's very good to keep a uh, check on your body. Get to visit a gyna. Yeah. Akina Suzi uku inje. We might have had our experiences, but we have never experienced your body. Mm. So it's only a gyna who is able to help you. So don't use other people's experience to judge yes. your own yeah. body. True. Yes. True. True. Wow. <clears throat> Sorry. Thank you so much, Suzi. That was. Uh, quite a testimony mm -hmm. yeah and um if someone wants to reach to you where can they find you oh yes what a good question mm. <laughs> <laughs> what are your handles <laughs> <laughs> the social media, the social handle. media handles. Yeah, ah, we waited for that question. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my name is Susie Yule Diadem. Mm -hmm. uh, Diadem. People ask me what it means. Diadem uh, is a reflection of royalty. It's I am a crown in God's head. Amen. And so I, I, I express um, the nature and the beauty of being in a kingdom. Wow. So, and this kingdom that I belong to is a beautiful one and it's the one that gives such kind of healing when you have lost your loved one mm. and it's too dark, you don't know where to face. Mm. In this kingdom, there is light. When you have lost your child and the doctor said you only, have, you only had one chance to get a child, mm. now you don't know what to do. In this kingdom, there is light that comes and mm. makes you cope with these things. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that is reason I call myself a diadem. Mm -hmm. So I am Susie Yule Diadem. Mm -hmm. It's our okay. biblical name. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find me in my YouTube channel, which is Susie Yule Diadem. In, on Facebook, I'm still Susie Yule Diadem. Mm -hmm. Instagram, I'm Suzy Ule Diadem. Yeah. I carry the diadem all, all the way. The way. <laughs> <laughs> Even no. in TikTok, yeah. Suzy Ule Diadem. Okay. Yes, so um, I, that's my name, mm -hmm. Suzy Ule Diadem. Thank you so much. Yes. That was uh, a good good testimony. Mm -hmm. it, uh, when, um, when I started this channel, mm -hmm. I know people, uh, I started with... Uh, Doctors, mm -hmm. a gyna, and a urologist. Mm -hmm. So um, people are educated mm -hmm. <laughs> about infertility, infertility both yes. men and women. Mm. And I know um, the, the previous, um, it was a testimony on how she waited on God, mm -hmm. but eventually got, got uh, children mm -hmm. after one tube busted. Mm -hmm. You know, she conceived with one shriveled oh. tube. <laughs> one. Uh <-huh. laughs> She's a mother of two. No. So, um, and I know now there are those who might also having tube issues mm. or uh, a, a, um, yeah, PCOS, uterus, uh -huh. uterus mm. I don't know what. Mm. There are so many complications. Yes. And even the, the, the men, maybe their sperm count is not really. It's low, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So um, having your story mm. brings another perspective to people. Mm -hmm. Like, should I accept that I cannot have children? Yes, yes. Or 
should I continue trying or what other avenues one can try mm, to, mm. to 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 be to be called parent, mm. you know, to be called mother or father. It, it, it is not always biological. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. And you can also have a father or a mother. Mm. Uh, they say the, everyone can be a father, mm -hmm. but not everyone can be a dad. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Yeah. So mm. you, you might be that father, but you are not a dad. Not a dad, yes. yes. <laughs> and someone true. else might not be the, 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 the real father, mm. the biological father, but mm. is their dad. Yes, yes. Yeah, so... Thank you so much for accepting to be on this platform. Mm, mm. And uh, guys, Mumeskia, Suzy, Yule, Diadem. Huh. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> a very, a very unique name. Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, before you go, the reason I accepted to come, eh? mm -hmm. like you're saying, and I want to thank you because of even... Uh, considering to air mm. this testimony yes. because most of the time we would hear testimonies of she waited and God came. Mm. Those ones we had, Hannah cried to God mm. and God came yeah. and ashamed Penina. So there was that waiting until God comes. Mm. Then it was so silent of when he doesn't come, what happens? Exactly. Because we only know how Hannah God came, mm. how Rebecca God came. Mm. So what happens when he don't come? So thank you for allowing me to share so that I can say yes. what happens <laughs> when, <laughs> when, that, when you wait and there is no answer. Yes. Actually, the answer is, <laughs> they say the, the answers of God is wait, mm -hmm. yes, and no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... <laughs> when, when, when you wait, I would put it this way, when you wait and God answers differently. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> you wait and then he answers eh, yes or no. Yes. It's, it's one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. so thank you so much for really coming and share your testimony yeah. on this platform. Yeah, we don't take it for granted. And uh, guys, um, I hope you have... Uh, picked something and as I always say please please share 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 to people don't just you know some people just hold like they see the video they're like hey that was inspirational but you're not sharing with <clears throat> other mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. outside there there mm -hmm. are so many people who are hurting there are so many people who are going through the same thing mm -hmm. and they might also be an encouragement to to the family and to the society to the community mm -hmm. at large so mm -hmm. please continue what you are doing <laughs> we appreciate <laughs> you <laughs> continue mm -hmm. subscribing continue sharing and also Get to hit the button for for uh, Susie Yule Diadem and yes, see what yes. she's doing, yes. the ministry that God has given her, mm. and also encourage uh, the people around you mm. who are going through the same thing. So, mm. guys, thank you so much. Uh, to Nane Tena, let's do this again. <laughs> <laughs>